Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? Pray. I got my Pray for Revival shirt on from Harvest America tonight because I want to talk to you about prayer. I want to talk to you about P R A Y E R. Another acrostic lesson that I have actually given before. I did this last year. On the 25th, I delivered it at Gel Ministry on August the 1st of 2019, and I wrote it on September the 4th, 2019, through the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk to you about prayer, about the communication of prayer and what it is. And uh, I want to, I forgot that I was doing this too. I want to share with you what I wrote today. No, nope, not like that. Yeah. I don't think I am on my page. It says manage page. I'm on my page, but everything is over here. I'm sorry. I thought I, I had every. I thought I had everything ready, but apparently I did not. Because I'm gonna read what I wrote today. I did this this afternoon in my office. I just started back homeschooling this week, so I'm trying to work back into that schedule. Uh, it's different when you've taken a week off. Okay. There it is. Okay, but first of all, I want to pray. <laughs> and my favorite way to pray is on my knees. And so I'm going to get on my knees tonight. Um, haven't been doing that during this time because I have an injured hip. So, um, oh, sorry. Just trying to get rid of that. So I could answer it later. Okay. <laughs> oh my, it's an action packed day for me. Okay, I had a great day. I hope you had a great day. So let's jump into prayer. Prayer is communication with God. And uh, prayer is us coming before Him and um, thanking Him for everything that He's given us. Let's see here. Where is it? Jesus taught us how to pray, pray and I'm not sure whether it's in here or not. Um... Okay, I don't know. It, like I said, it's 2019 when I read this, when I wrote this. So let's pray. Let's pray. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. We thank you that you do love us and you do care about us, God, and you do want us to come before you and pray. God, you are on your throne and you are in control. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. God, you are the righteous judge that will come and judge all unrighteousness. But God, you are also loving and kind and compassionate and forgiving, full of grace. You are powerful and mighty. But God, you are also long-suffering towards us. God, we just thank you that you have called us to be your children and that you love us and that you care for us and that you really do want us to take time to pray to you, to thank you, God, and to bring all things to you. Bring the small things, bring the medium things, bring the large things, God. You want them all. And you can um, 
you can answer all of them. And you do. Sometimes you answer immediately. And sometimes we have to wait for that answer because you were working things out. We just have to trust you fully, God. We pray for all the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to you, that, that Jesus would save them, that they would be drawn to Jesus, and that he would save them. We also pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray that you would... Uh, draw them back to you that they would repent and they would return to you we pray for all the many disasters that go on every day God all over the world we just pray for these people we pray that you would meet their needs that they would reach out to you in their time of need we also pray for the people that have lost loved ones we just pray that you would give them peace comfort and strength we pray for Mr. Mike we pray for Josie we pray for Josie's co-worker Maria, and we pray for um, Josie's sister. We just pray for healing, God. We just pray that you would give them strength and help them to recover from what they have. And uh, we just lay all these things at the feet of Jesus, God, and we just thank you. We thank you for sending us Jesus that offers us, us salvation. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so... That is how I like to pray. I like to get on my knees and pray. And I do that every morning. And I haven't been doing it in here because it's just been too hard with my... I think I have sciatica. I think I, I am a self-diagnoser, self-medicine uh, person. Unless I just have something that I cannot... I can't find something that will get me over it then I'll go to the doctor but I don't go to the doctor every time I get sick I'll take probiotics I will do a lot of things so that I don't have to go to the doctor I'm not afraid of going to the doctor I just don't I just grew up in a home where we didn't go to the doctor every time we were sick you know our mama would take care of us and uh, she would doctor us and she did a really good job I just uh, hardly remember ever having to go to the doctor when I was a little girl. I'm definitely not saying that I have anything against doctors because I do not. Okay, so let's talk about prayer. So this is what I shared today. I shared the song, When We Pray, uh, by Torrin Wells. Really good song. I uh, didn't write down any of the lyrics, so maybe you might want to go and listen to it later. So I love this song and message by Torn Wells, When We Pray. I love the lyrics of this song. Power is unleashed in heaven when we pray. Changes come about. Chains of addiction are broken, and God moves mountains through our prayers. It is a true privilege to come before my holy, al almighty God that this God cares about what is on my heart and mind. He loves me personally and uniquely like no other person on this earth. He feels this same way towards us all. He loves us, He cares about us, and He cares for us. He wants great things in our lives. He wants a close relationship with us. And He wants to show us each His miraculous powers in addition to what he has done in his word. Prayer is merely a conversation with God and what really blows my mind is God can keep up, can keep us, can keep us with every one of us, keep up with every one of us and can be listening to our prayers at the same time. That is miraculous in itself. I personally cannot do two conversations at once and have stopped people so I can focus on one conversation at a time. God tends to it all. Everything. Don't doubt his powers. Don't doubt the power of prayer. He loves it when his children come to him with our small things, medium things, and our large things too. 
They all matter to him. He loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to save us all. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Are you saved today? Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Do not wait. Pray to Jesus now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3:16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. And I'm not going to read the rest. But um, prayer is such an important part of Christianity. It is, um, it helps develop the relationship between God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit and ourselves. Because when we pray, we're invoking heaven to listen. And we need to come humbly also. We need to humble ourselves before God. Now I want to tell you something that happened starting yesterday. But it's, I'm not going through all the details. I'm just going to hit the highlights. So my friend Janet started back at her job in a different position. And so she had some getting to work on time issues yesterday because of the time change. She didn't realize that it had changed. I wouldn't have known if Ricky hadn't told me on Saturday that it was time to change. I didn't know either. And um, so she was running late. So she was a little bit upset about that, hitting traffic in the city and everything. And then um, she got to work and was expecting everything to go really well, but it did not. She did not have a good day at work. And sometimes we don't have good days. We don't. But when she called me today, she was very apprehensive and nervous and anxious about going back because she didn't know. They said, well, we're going to put you in a different position. Well, she didn't know what that was going to be. She didn't know what her schedule was going to be. She didn't really know. And so the, the not knowing and the fear is sometimes uh, overwhelming for us. So I could tell that she was overwhelmed, so I prayed for her. We prayed on the phone together. We prayed about her being anxious. We prayed about her being in peace. We prayed about her resting in Jesus and not to worry about it, that you know God, God is in control and this is God's plan and purpose. And so she ended up with a great job with some great coworkers. So that was an answer to prayer, like an immediate answer to prayer. Okay, well, a while ago we were on the phone too and she was looking for something. That's a small thing. Um, a bad day and uh, anxiousness and all that, that's kind of a medium thing. That's not really a large, large thing, but it's a medium thing. Well, then she was looking for some shoe inserts that she needs to put in her boots for work. And I said, well, let's pray about it. So we, we did. We prayed about it. And within about, I don't know, a, a few minutes, a minute or two, she found him. So see, God God will answer our prayers. He will answer our small prayers. He will answer our medium prayers. And He will answer our big prayers. But the thing is, we have to take the time to be humble enough to ask. He, he knows what we need. He knows. He knew today when Janet left her house. He knew that she was anxious. He knew that she was upset. She, he knew that she was a little bit fearful. He knew all that. But he wants us to bring those things to him. He wants us to bring those emotions to him. He wants us to bring these problems to him so he can solve them for you. For all of us. Okay, so this I wrote in 2019. I wrote it when I write these lessons. A lot of times, I don't even know what I'm saying. The words are just flowing and I'm just typing. I believe that I'm writing them through the Holy Spirit because I'm really not having to think real hard. 
Uh, I'm not having to think real hard about scriptures. They just kind of come. Okay, well, I think that will fit. So where is that? Sometimes I know where it is. Okay, so let's talk about prayer. Why do we pray? What do you think prayer is? And how important do you think it is to God that we pray? And so uh, this is the an acrostic lesson where P stands for something, R stands for something, A stands for something, Y stands for something, E stands for something, and R stands for something. So P equals powerful communication with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. When we pray, the spiritual battle shifts to eternal, and we have God's ear. He will listen to us when we humble ourselves in prayer before Him. I believe that getting on your knees is showing that humility of a child. Our children are smaller than us. We look down on them. Uh, I believe that that is the way that I like to pray. I like to humble myself. So let's read Matthew 6.6. 6. And I'm not even real sure what this is. Because like I said, I, I did this in 2019. I have slept many times since I did this lesson. So Matthew 6, 6 says, It's part of the Sermon on the Mount, I believe. It says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the do thy door, pray unto thy Father, which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of, before you ask him. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and read through this model prayer. I don't see it on here anywhere. Um, no, I'm not going to because it is on here. Okay, so, so we are to, when we are by ourselves, we are to, it says go in a closet. I come in my office and I shut the door and I get on my knees and I pray. I have a favorite place where I pray in my office. I have a prayer bench that um, I bought and um, I have my Bible and I have all my stuff there and on top I have scriptures. I have all kinds of things. Kind of like if you've seen the war room like in front of my prayer bench is a bunch of writing and stuff and scriptures. But let's see. Okay, public prayer is great, but God wants us also to pray to Him all by ourselves in secret. I say the best way is on your knees, humble before your Creator God of all, the one true God. It feels kind of silly at first, but when you get used to this humbling position, before the one true God that controls all things, knows all details, solutions, and outcomes, you will wonder why you did not do this earlier, and all the outcomes could be so different, could have been so different. God calls us to humility, obedience, and trust. This is my hashtag for 2019, humble obedience and trust. When I decided to quit my job, and work for God in ministry, declaring this every day on, on Facebook. My life has significantly changed, but the changes are awesome. Tap into the powerful communication through humble prayer before God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Try it and see if Jesus was not right about prayer. Okay, so the R... The R in prayer stands for repentance. Repentance before a holy God. 
we have to come repentant also, which means doing an about face from your sins and back to God. God will not hear your prayers if you are unrepentant of your sins, because He is holy and unable to look upon sin. He could not look upon Jesus when He was on the cross, because of all the sin and shame that was put on Him. So let's read Luke 5, 31 through 32. And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So God wants us to repent. And so this is Jesus speaking. Jesus came to show us what repentance is and how important it is. You can live your own way in your sins, but there will be consequences and no blessings from it. Some of the consequences just are not worth the sin in, in your lives. I have had sin in my life that I really regret now, and the consequences were tough. God wants only good for you, and like I explained at our service at camp, to receive that good plan and purpose, you must stay in repentance asking for forgiveness daily because we all sin daily. We have to seek a relationship with Jesus through God's Word, praise, worship, and prayer. Sometimes we step away from God many times in one day, but I guarantee He is always waiting for you to turn around and run into His arms. You can always run to the Father. Alright, my child came in. I've got to go put something on for him to watch because he won't leave. He won't leave until I do. So I'm sorry, but I'll be right back. Alright, bud. What did I do with the remote? Get up. watching Veggie Tales, and he doesn't like the one with the sheep. He doesn't like Dave and the Giant Pickle, and I don't understand because I like Dave and the Giant Pickle, and he used to like Dave and the Giant Pickle. You have to be a Veggie Tales fan to even know what I'm talking about. Okay, so after R is A. A equals adoration or thanksgiving. We come before God with adoration and thanksgiving. I usually do this first because I want God to know that I adore Him with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. I want God to know that I appreciate everything that He has done, does, and will do in my life and others' lives too. I want Him to know that I totally trust Him with everything I have and will ever have. So let's read Philippians 4, 6-7. song good God Almighty all right I'm looking for Philippians there it is Philippians 4 6 through 7 it says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we need to take our thanksgiving to God daily in prayer. Life is not perfect. And I know that some of you don't like 
don't feel like you have anything to be thankful about, but there are always things to be thankful about. Your life may not be what you want it to be now, but you can always make changes for the better when you yield to God. So um, the A is for adoration or thanksgiving. And so the Y of prayer is yield, yielding to God. Yielding means just turning it all over to Him. Guess what? You have no control anyways. I have no control. No one does. God has total control of what happens in your life. And sadly, sometimes for some of you, so do the adults that have free will to make decisions that affect you personally in so many ways. So let's read Romans 6, 12 through 23. read it from that far away 6 12 through 23 let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall have shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obe obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were yet servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now? ashamed for the end of those things is death but now being made free from sin and become servants to God ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life all right so we need to yield to God we are we are to not yield ourselves to unrighteousness but only to God Sin is bondage and not freedom, with a very high price to pay. Sin feels good for a season, and then it just doesn't. And if you are saved by Jesus, the Holy Spirit that resides in your body will make you miserable through conviction. I know, I experience that from time to time. Turn away from the traps and lies of this world and the father of lies, Satan. So we have to yield to God. Prayer is yielding to God. We are stopping and we are going, Okay, God, we are going to follow you. We are not going to follow the world. We are going to follow you. We're going to listen to you. When you speak, we're going to listen. And we are going to be thankful. So the E in prayer is earthly and eternal. So when we pray, we invite the eternal to come and meet us here on the earth because we cannot go to heaven in these earthly bodies. So let's read Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Um, after this manner, therefore, pray. And so this is the model prayer from Jesus. 
pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay, well that was a little farther than I wanted to go because for thine is the kingdom and the glory. Uh, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, that was the end of that. This is the model prayer that Jesus gave us. We are to, on this earth, call upon God from heaven. Is God always going to answer our prayers in the manner that we ask? No. God has three answers. Yes, no, and wait. Because sometimes God has a better answer in the wait. He is making a better way in His always perfect timing. I have had to wait for things and it drives me crazy. I do not like the wait answer. I like the I like the immediate answer like Janet and I got. I like that. That's like, okay, well we can move on and we can pray for something else. But we are not on our time. We are on God's perfect timing. So, um, I am very, it either is or isn't, and not a wait person. I'm not. I want a yes, no, or I just, you know. Um, that used to even drive me crazy when I was a kid asking for permission. Maybe or wait tells me nothing. God's maybe is usually that he is up to something or maybe the conditions are not right either in heaven or on earth. God always knows what is best for you. If you are seeking his guidance through his word, the Bible, which is basic instructions before leaving earth, according to the evangelist Greg Laurie, which this is his t-shirt from Harvest America, not a coincidence total god thing and god's perfect timing so please read it there is so much in it that you will need as students and as adults to navigate your life okay so r r is for revelation through prayer god will reveal things to you that you never understood before he speaks ideas to me while i'm praying he wakes me up and speaks to me while I sleep. This morning I woke up thinking about prayer and the importance of it in spiritual battle. If we could see the spiritual eyes, if we could see with spiritual eyes, there is a battle in this room of God's angels and Satan's demons over every unsaved soul in this room. So let's say John 3:16 and 17 together. I don't have anybody here. So I'll just say it by myself. Maybe when you watch this later though, you might want to say it yourself. Most people have this verse memorized. I have it memorized with lots of different versions. I prefer King James. This is what I grew up learning and this is what I prefer. I like New King James too. Okay. So John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So you see, God wants all his children to receive new life through salvation of Jesus. But Satan wants souls too, and this is an ongoing war fought on earth and in heaven. It is a serious battle, and you have an eternal decision to make. None of us leaders can make this decision for you. Your parents, grandparents, no one but only you. We all have free will, and this decision has to be made. 
If you die without making this decision, you will go to hell, which is a very real place of separation from everyone, especially a loving God that created you. I want to show you a video on another night of a preacher, Bill Weiss, who spent 23 minutes in hell. There is no party and no death to escape the demons there, which you will be able to see. What he described could save the entire world. Believe me, you will not be able to see because of the darkness, and you won't see anything but tormented people, which you will be one of them. It could possibly be like living in a volcano, so hot with no relief forever. I shared that with you at camp, that God has called me to evangelism for your age group and college students too. I fear that because of our culture these days that your generations will miss heaven by 18 inches. I think many of you think that you are saved because of a decision made as a kid, and maybe you are. Only God knows hearts and true professions. Many of you are not living for God and not separating yourself from the ways of the world. So that leads me to believe that you think you can be of God in the world at the same time. That is a lie from Satan. Do not follow the ways of the world. Use your life in service to God. If I did not love you and care, we would not worry about telling you the truth. But Jesus called us to tell and share with others. We want the very best life for each of you. We want the life that God has planned for you. We want to see you in eternity. I want to be praising and worshiping our awesome God with you. All of us do. That is why we come and share with you our time and gifts of time. God sends me dreams and visions and has been for about 10 years. Actually, it's been more like 30. Um, one dream was about the rapture. I was in heaven and I felt like I really don't know many people there. And where is so and so? Why aren't they here? He revealed to me that only he knows hearts. So some people we think are saved are not. And some we think are not really are. He showed me his anger towards the earth and man. He said, I am sick of the blatant sin and blasphemy against me and my son. God is getting ready to send Jesus to get his church. Will you be ready? I set no dates because in the Bible it says that not even Jesus knows, but it could be any day. God wants you to know that you do not want to be left behind after the catching away or rapture of the church. He also clearly told me the other day that out of a hundred students, only seven are saved, which means 93 are unsaved. It broke my heart and I went to Google to find proof, but no one, none was found. And I came to realize that only God knows hearts and his statistics, statistics <laughs> are always right. He asked me what I was going to do with his 93. My answer to this question is, I'm going to share with everyone I see, especially this age group, the importance of choosing Jesus as their Savior before it is too late. Not because I am anything, because I am not, but I am humble, obedient, and trusting God in everything. And most important to God is, I am willing. So let's close with the description of heaven that was shared with Apostle John. Let's read Revelation 22, 1 through 21. Revelation 22. It's a lot to read, but I'm going to read it because it's lovely and gets you very excited for heaven. Gets me very excited for heaven anyway. Okay. 22. 
22, 1 through 21 says. I'm going to get me a drink of water before I do. Mm. Such good water. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, excuse me, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it, for I am thy servant and of thy brethren the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of, this, of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is just, let him be, let him be unjust still. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into this city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Yeah. Jesus had have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offering of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Come, Lord Jesus. He which testifieth these things say, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So that is a description of heaven, which... I can't wait to get there. So, it is long, but so very worth every word. And if you can get an image in your mind of what our reward is for service for God's kingdom, it is going to be so worth everything that we encounter here during this brief time compared to an eternity in paradise. I write the messages that God lays on my heart through the Holy Spirit and Scripture Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions or comments? If you have any comments, then please put them in the comments. Um, so 
then I'll play the song. Actually, I did this for the youth also. And I don't have that written in there. It must have been on September the 4th that I did it for the youth. I didn't write it on there. Because a lot of this talked about being students. And so a lot of times when I do write things, I write things according to them too. Because um, I just do. Uh, sometimes I share uh, Bible studies with them too. So, my YouTube watchers are seeing a lot of, uh, what are those called? Dandelions? Yeah. And I was thinking as I chose that, that those are all the prayers that are going up to God. And God is hearing every one of them. There's not one that He doesn't hear. So this was my... Um, I'm going to turn this off. My battery is running down over here. I really need to get it fully charged. Then it would last longer. Okay, so this was my notes from my quiet time with God this morning. Good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings. A new day of opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new day to accomplish great things, child. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings. A new day of opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new day to accomplish great things. Which I did get some things accomplished today. And I said, thank you for all of my blessings, God. Thank you for all you are and what you do in my life. And he said, child, as overwhelming as the information is that is flowing in, use the discernment of the Holy Spirit to know all truth. For focus on me and the things of my kingdom. Continue organizing your house also. Keep moving and making better food choices for yourself so that you will feel better. Keep being obedient to me also. Teach your child today. Focus on speech with all things too. Be diligent in teaching child. The dominoes are falling one by one and soon in an instant all truth. It is a physical and spiritual battle that rages every day. I know that you feel it every day, child. So soon the scales are balanced again. Right now they are not. Many people are compromised and paid off to look the other way. But soon the bad actors will be put away and freedom returns once again. As they celebrate, their demise comes. I am the righteous judge. And I will judge all unrighteousness soon. All things will fall into place perfectly, child. Trust me fully in the waiting period. I am always working. I see what you are saying, God. I see it clearly and hear it too. I trust you fully and you have shown me that your timing is always perfect. You, you love and care for us. You are protecting your children. You created and equipped us for such a time as this. We are the generations of common sense that comes from you. We can survive without the conveniences of the internet. Thank you for meeting with me today, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now be obedient to me in all I ask. The reunion is soon, child, so be ready. All in an instant, so quickly, all my children will be with me in the perfect place of heaven. What I just got through reading, the description of heaven. And I said, Maranatha, God. Because I'm ready. Things, things need to be better here. Alright, well let's do... Let's do the E-band.
Okay. So this is the gold color. But before that, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1 16. So the gold color on this bracelet represents God, the creator of all, who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God, God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So then we move over here to the dark color and the white question mark the dark color represents sin which is doing wrong th things God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard to per of perfection sin separates us from God the Bible says that the penalty of our sin is death or separation from God forever So the first question Mark is asking, can your sins be removed so that you can know God? So the next color is red. Red is the next color. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. Because of what Jesus did, we are free from sin. Free from sin. <laughs> okay, so the white with the red question mark. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that's Romans 10, 9. So the question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus, Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So if you have not, then let's pray. Let's pray. And I will leave a space for you if you would like to do that if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior right now right now so you can spend eternity with him and God and the Holy Spirit and all the other Saints all of his children the angels the cherubs everything that he has in heaven then repeat this God thank you for loving me I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So let's move to the next color. The green color represents growth 
in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. So green is for growth. And so then you have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God, love others. So the next one is the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and His love. And then this is what we've been talking about tonight. Prayer. Prayer. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. And then the next one is, When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then the next one is, Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other church is a good place to start it is we have an awesome church uh, share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him tell as many people as you can so if you said that prayer and you receive Jesus into your heart to be your Savior then welcome to the kingdom family of God you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His Son, which Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way to heaven. And uh, so every day, take some time and read the Bible and pray. Prayer is so important. God can move mountains, but we have to pray. We have to let Him know that we need things. And like I said, it might you might not get the answer that you want, but you're probably going to get the answer that's best because God wants the best for us. All right. Well, I'm ready to do the blessing from God. I think I've done everything. I shared about prayer. I'm sweating. If you can't tell, oh, this is on high. I need a, I guess I need a bigger fan. I need my fan closer. This is my fan. I love my fan. It's just a little one. But I may need to have a bigger one in here too. I may need going two ways, two way fans in here. I haven't started running my air conditioner yet. But it was 77 today, so it may be time soon. Okay, so this is God's blessing in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. You know, God wants to give us peace. God wants to bless us. He wants us also to have a relationship with Him in prayer and reading His Word. Those are such important things. And also praise. Praise God every day. Find some music. Find some Christian music that you like. I'm going to turn this off. It's down to 11% battery. Um, find some Christian music that you like. And praise God. Praise Him. Get it. I mean, there's like, I've got four Christian stations. I'll tell you my Christian stations. And my number one position is 101.7, which is Air One. I like Air One. They play more of the up to date music, which I like. The second position in my car is 88.3, The Journey. The third one is. Uh, 94.9 no it's 90.9 it's 90.9 fourth one is 94.9 so I'm constantly through these stations while I drive and I also listen to iHeart on my phone iHeart radio you can listen to Christian hits top 20 Christian hits for free and they number the Christian songs and uh, it's the top 20. 
And it's really good. Every week they'll add one. And because something will roll off. So anyway, those are my five Christian stations. Christian music is all I listen to. I don't listen to secular music at all. Unless I happen to go into a store and they're playing sec secular music. I can't control that. But I always listen to Christian music. I want good lyrics going in my head. I want good lyrics in my heart. I want to please God. The other music does not please God. It is not about Him. Usually it is uh, about worshiping sin. And it's not about God. And God doesn't want to hear that. Okay. Well, let's pray. And let's get off of here need to go take care of my son I have enjoyed the time talking to you about prayer though I don't know what we're going to be talking about tomorrow I actually printed off some verses about prayer I'm going to go through them and if they're somewhat different we may talk about prayer again tomorrow um, unless God brings another subject because God brings all my subjects it starts in the morning or it starts right before I wake up it goes all through the day and then by the afternoon I've had so many confirmations I know that's what he wants me to talk about all right well let's pray I'm gonna pray for my friend Josie and um, some other people that are sick and uh, just thank God. Thank God for everything. God, we just come to you and we just thank you for all that you are and for all that you do, God. There is so much, so much that you do. You answer our prayers with the best answer. And sometimes it may not even be the answer that we want at the time. But looking back, we go, Ooh, I'm glad God didn't answer that prayer. Because God, you know what's best for us. And you take good care of us. You love us and you care for us and you want the very best for us. You want us to have a close relationship with you that includes reading your word, walking in your word, and praying to you and praising you God that is what you want you want that relationship with us that is what you created us for is to have that relationship with you you want us to trust you in all things in the small things in the medium things in the large things God all things you want us to bring to you and you just you have such a better plan than we have God so we just need to trust you and God we just pray we pray for all the people that are sick we just pray for healing for them we pray for Josie I pray for Mike I pray for her sister and I pray for um, her friend Maria I just pray for healing for all of these people and I just pray, God, for the lost. I just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals that have strayed away. We pray for them to come back, for them to repent, for them to return to that relationship, for you to restore it to where it is good as new, God. And we just pray for all the many people that have lost loved ones. We just pray, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God, and that they would feel your presence. We also pray for the little babies that are home now, God, especially the one that was in the NICU. We just pray for um, her to get stronger and stronger every day, God. We thank you for new life. We know that these are blessings from you. That these are beautiful blessings, God, that you give us, that you want us to raise in your ways and not the ways of the world, that you want us to protect them and you want us to watch over them and make sure that they are not doing the things of the world, that they are doing things that fall in line with you. God, you trust us with your children and we just thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, that was, uh, I really enjoyed this time about prayer. 
somebody's talking on my on my Facebook. I don't know who that guy is. A friend of mine sent me something. We talk about things that um, I don't talk to all my other friends about, like um, government things, political things, things that I can't even I can't even talk about on here because um, I'll get a strike. But that's okay. It's okay. Cause God God knows all the details. God knows every detail. God knows all the truth. God knows the solutions and God knows the outcomes. And soon things are going to change. There's going to be a wave of change and God is going to bring it about. And because, because we have been praying, because we've been praying for truth. And the other side cannot cannot hold back the truth when the truth comes out and it's going to be bad for many people but you know what that's the price that's the price of dabbling in those things that are against God so stay on the side of God read his word pray every day and praise and so, God bless you all and your families, and uh, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. Much love. Maybe someday I'll get really good at this. Much love. And cyber hugs. Good night.